This question, there's the two things I want you to take away. Number one is I want you to appreciate uh, here's the content, here's the stuff I want to you to be able to do for the exam in five weeks time and also have the confidence to apply these in a consulting role okay which in some ways is much higher level of a standard than what you need for the exam okay so hopefully both are in the same road and I'm, I'm really excited about teaching this because what I'm going to do in some ways is teach you I'm, I'm taking you we're going to do the SCA today and then show you briefly how it relates here we're not going to do the balance scorecard today directly okay in some ways we may not even touch balance scorecard until next week later next week okay because we're really getting into we're focused on strategy understand strategy then we're going to go into systems thinking and I'll teach you all about strategy maps and how to do that and then we're going to go into measurement measurements a long way off at the moment and as I I hinted to you in the last class what what was that framework I showed what do we want to have happen tomorrow okay and then work backwards what do we have to do today to have happen what we want in the future you with me on that because and it's that it's that sense of cause effect cause effect that we want to get into our mind here but today it's a little bit more complicated than that because I'm going to overlay over that the reality of today's financial markets and what is the reality the reality is that when if you want to get attention of C managers CEO CFO CIO okay just chief someone right whoever's in ch big the big people in the organization if you want to get their attention they're not necessarily going to feel that it's relevant to look at non-financial measures you're going to get their attention with financial measures I think you understand that so for example when they go and talk to their shareholders they're talking to them not about customer satisfaction or employee satisfaction or whether their employees are happy what are they talking about they're talking about top-line growth margins okay uh, expenses okay uh, the outlook their product life cycle you with me on this this is the reality and you all know uh, there was a stock last night that just went over one thousand dollars US which was that Google. Google so did I tell you to buy it I know you go back and have a look at the previous class I hinted on that okay so I was lucky to get in there a little bit and had a little run there that was very nice last night very excited about that so the CEOs of Google when they face their shareholders what matters is they've got to answer in terms of financial 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 and the next three weeks what am I doing scorecard 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 do you th they'll be laughed out of the shareholder meeting if they start talking about a balanced scorecard to the shareholders right and so the next three weeks we're talking about scorecard so how do I reconcile this scorecard with the reality of you know the shareholders meeting do you know what I mean uh, we're going to try and do that today we're going to try and make that linkage there is a linkage and we're going to cover it very very quickly we're not going to go too deep you're going to be examined on some parts of that linkage but not the whole linkage but I hopefully if you can appreciate the linkage that I make today uh, you will appreciate the two parts that are relevant that's going to be in the exam those two parts very quickly are like question A of the exam which is a customer preference map you have to do uh, and also question B which you need to have a sense of whether a company is following a cost product differentiation or cost leadership strategy do you all have a copy of this okay I've got extra extra laying around um, there's plenty hi there 
Pardon? It's all there, it's all there. Okay, it's all here. Good, good, good. Excellent. Okay. All right, so A and B is sort of one thing we're going to look at today. And it's kind of, A and B is kind of, okay, A and B is over here. This is the kind of strategy of the company. This is why customers are buying from the company. And at the other end, down here, is, is, the, annual, is the quarterly shareholders meeting. Okay? Oh, what's the top line growth? Oh, what are your margins? What are your expenses? What's your outlook for the next six months? You know? Wow, big difference between what I'm going to teach you here and the reality down here. You with me on this? Okay, so just bear with me today. I, I'm going to try and make a connection for you. Okay, and when we get to the end, you'll actually hopefully see that connection as we go through. All right, but we're going to start up here first. We're starting up here. All right, which is really, uh, uh, I'm helping, we want to start up here because we're going to look at uh, part A and part B of this question, exam question. Part D is kind of uh, down here a little bit, okay, especially with the financial, the financial is directly related, and then you've got the other measures, customer, internal, learning and growth. They're the measures. They're, that's down here, but today we're focusing up here, okay? Uh, let me show you. And up here is actually formulating the strategy to start with. Why do we want to formulate strategy? Because we want to have some sense that we know where we're going, or better still, we know why our customers buy from us, okay? That's the real essence of any strategy knowing why the customer buys from you, okay? So I'm going to take you through some real frameworks that was developed by, as part of the World Competitiveness Manufacturing Model. It was developed uh, by consultants and government people in Australia over 20 years ago. And I was very fortunate to uh, come across that and work with some consultants in Australia then where they would go into small and medium-sized enterprises to help them turn around their strategy to become successful. And so these frameworks, I'm going to show you a couple of them today. All right, that's the first framework here. So let's have a look at that. We know what a sustainable competitive advantage is. It's all about uh, knowing why customers buy from you and <coughs> knowing that if there's another reason why you want customers to buy from you, then how you're going to develop that in the future, okay? All right. This is what companies are aiming to do. They want to beat their competitors and provide value to the customer. And here's the other thing that I want to take you through. You want to be able to develop the consensus as a priorities and initiatives to undertake in the short term. What do we mean by that? Well, I'm going to show you what I mean. What I want to do now is, that's the definition of a strategic competitive advantage. There's the theoretical definition. But here's the practical one. They asked 234 manufacturing companies, this was some time ago, oh, what is it, your sustainable competitive advantage? Why do you compete? Why do you feel that you are winning and beating your competitors in the current environment? And they came up with this list here. Look, the list is longer than that, all right? But I put it in front of you because I'm going to get you to do an exercise. Maybe it's, you get to choose an organization that you've been involved with or that you might work at, and I want you to come up with five, five qualities of that organization that you think would be part of its strategy. And those five, may, those five may be one of these things here. And you're thinking, okay, if you choose Ernst & Young or KPMG, Deloitte or PwC, you're thinking, oh, this is for manufacturing. These are all consulting companies. Hey, this is just to prompt your thinking, okay? I'm sure you can think of things for a service company, okay? Some of these may overlap, some of them may not. Fine. Just... I've just put it here to prompt your thinking. Okay, are you with me on that? Is that okay? Is, okay, you with? Good, good, good. 
All right, so now here's your first task. In groups of two, I want you to come up with, oh, number one, choose the company that you want to analyze and come up with five criteria that you think are relevant to the way in which that company should be or is successful. Okay, five items. Some of those items may be in here, some of them may not. Okay, there could be thousands of different criteria you can think of. All right, so could you come up, choose your company very quickly. Let, let, how about you yell out some of your answers that you've got here? So, um, who's done Apple? Who chose Apple? Do we have Apple here? All right, so what did you come up with the item that was in your green area? Continuing product innovation. And so then what you'll do now is Apple will come up with a strategic competitive advantage is we will win by having continued product innovation. You with me? Now is there an accounting firm that was done? Or the girls who did Mango, right? So what did you come up what did you come up with in this top right hand corner, the green area Efficient. for Mango? Well, um, can you try again? What was? Uh, efficient and flexible production. E efficient and flexible production. With um, operations adaptable to customers. With operations that are flexible to customers. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right, and so Mango will win by doing that, but may, you may want to simplify that because it seems like there's lots of things going on there. There may be two parts there. Because one is related to production, you want to, one is related to a certain customer value. Okay, so it may be, just take the first part, uh, efficient and flexible production. We will win by having the most efficient and flexible uh, production or supply chain in the whole industry. You with me on that? Okay, because when we have that, then we get new stock in faster than any of our competitors. We get we sell our lines faster than our competitors. And everything flows from that. But what's important is to say that initial catalyst that is required for Mango to win in the world. All right, one last one. Uh, from the back, the Apple girls, what did you put? What was your company? DBS. DBS. Wow, I love DBS. Well, I don't bank with them, but I, I'm sure they're good. All right. So, what did you have to say about DBS? What was it? What was the, what was the one that came up into your top high on high on value to the customer and high on ability to beat competitors? Uh, that DBS is convenient locations for all their APNs and hence they can capture all of Okay, we will win. So the, the statement for DBS will be: We will win by having the most convenient location of our ATMs for our customers Singapore wide. You with me on that? Okay, so there's a statement there. All right, and then, okay, let's move on to the next stage. That's the first thing you do, and you're thinking, what do you need to go through that, Neil? Have you ever thought about that? Why, why do you go through that process? That process I just took you through, what, what were you spending time doing? Did any of you have any arguments or disagreements? Hands up. Come on, you had some disagreements or arguments? You may have. Okay, and what you're doing here is that the more argument and disagreement and consensus building that goes into coming up with this we will win by statement, then the stronger stickability that statement has. Okay, now if the CEO just comes in and says, oh, here's our mantra for the next 12 months, we will win by doing this, this, and this, and no one participated in setting it, then it doesn't become, it come easy and it's going to flow, fly away very easily. Okay? But if it's done through consensus building, through this framework, and there's some argument and debate, and okay, let's have this this year, we can change it next year, then it's going to stick. And it's going to stick in terms of a culture control. It's going to stick in terms of a people control. You with me? So the first thing you've got to get with strategy is that the whole process of developing the strategy becomes a culture control device. 
and I've seen organizations where the the CEO comes in and says, oh, here's our mission, and never talk to anyone in the organization. And I could ask you, how much ownership do you think people in that organization have over that mission? You know, not much ownership at all. I think address this okay? Yes. They're just testing this, don't worry, it's okay. Okay, good, it's just an address. All right, so if there's not much fighting and consensus building an argument then to come up with something that you stand for then there's not going to be much ownership commitment and control you with me and this is a process of getting people together and you might say hey Neil you're only talking about two of Porter's five forces what about the other three you know competitive rivalry Okay, uh, regulatory forces and uh, suppliers. Okay, we just talked about customers and competitors. What about the other three? Well, if I gave you five, well, how long do you think it's going to take you to come up with something? Take you forever. Okay, you've got a simple thing, you've got to simplify it, dumb it down, focus on the two main things customers and competitors. Okay, the others matter, but this is the best way to get focus as fast as possible. Remember we had five different dimensions of performance measures, right? Yes or no? We did, right? Did I ask you to really know very, very well all five of them? Or just two of them? Was it five or two? It was the two. Same thing here. I chose the two most important of those five and then we build a real practical activity around those two. You see what I mean? That's how, and this is a special, this is a secret source that I bring to the classroom, bring it to you, okay? A normal lecturer will say, oh, here's Porter's five forces. You've got to memorize all those five. My approach is, let's choose the most, the two most that have practical relevance to how organizations really operate. And now let's get you to go for an exercise that you could do as a consultant with an organization in the future. Okay, and so now you see the practical application of a theory. What do you think? How's that? Is that good? Huh? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's keep moving on this, shall we? Okay, the next idea I want to introduce to you, introducing product differentiation and cost leadership. Oh, okay. Well, there's a third one. It's a focus strategy, but really that's a derivation of product differentiation. Let's just have a look at these two generic strategies out there. And you're probably thinking, why am I looking at this, Neil? Is this theory? What's the relevance of this to a shareholder meeting that Google held the night before yesterday? What's the relevance to the shareholder meeting that Apple will hold on the 28th of this month? What's the relevance to the shareholder meeting that Amazon will hold uh, in the next week? Okay, what's the relevance? Here's the relevance. We're going to take you through to this. If we know that the dominant strategy of a company is product differentiation, then when it comes to understanding the financial performance, we're going to focus on some ratios. And for product differentiation, we're, going to, we're, we're looking for uh, price recovery. We're looking for margins. We're looking for margin growth. And we're looking for growth in the market. If a company is following cost leadership, we're looking for other ratios. We're still looking for growth in the market, but we're not looking for margin growth. We're looking for, we're looking for productivity improvement. We're looking for productivity improvement. We're looking for different ratios. Okay, have you all done financial statement analysis? What I want you to take away today is you to be able to work out whether a company is following this strategy or this strategy. Of course, there's a focusing strategy, that is, when a firm selects, emphasize a market or a customer segment. All right, it's kind of like 
an extension of a differentiation strategy. All right, an extension of a differentiation strategy. For example, we have this one here. Guess what this camera is? Who is the maker of that camera? It starts with O. Olympus, yes. All right, they were the first to come up with a waterproof camera. You know that. All right, and so in some ways you could say, oh, Olympus kind of had a focusing strategy by coming up with a new market segment. Apple came up with a focusing strategy by coming out with tablets and, and created a new market. Okay, so it's kind of like focusing strategy is an, uh, an extension of product differentiation. All right, let's move on. Here are Here's the big question for you. How do you know whether a company is following one strategy or another strategy? How do you know? Here's the easiest way to know. Just ask yourself, if you were a customer of this company, why do you buy their product? If you buy their product because of, well, let me ask ladies, when you go to Mango, do you go there because of price, or because of quality, or because of new lines? Why do you go to Mango? I like the huh? Design. Design, okay. Um, when you buy, who's doing the Apple one? Who has Apple? Yeah, so do you buy, if you go buy Apple, why do you buy an Apple product? for quality, okay. Um, what about DBS, if you go and sign up with DBS? Why would you go to DBS? Convenient, Convenient okay. And also, uh, so when you answer that question, the big question here is that, and the three of you, none, neither of you mentioned money, in some ways all those organizations are following on some kind of product differentiation or maybe service differentiation with Mango so because maybe Zara has the same maybe H&M have the same but they don't have um, it's not about the cost that differentiates it's the range of products that differentiate okay so that's the big difference here and so you could say that Mango and Zara and all them they're kind of in lower price range, but they're trying to differentiate each other on other factors, so they kind of have a differentiation strategy. When you start to say, look, I'm using a particular service or I'm buying a particular product because I want to save money, now you know that that company has a cost leadership strategy. Does that make sense? That's how you know. Put yourself in the shoes of a customer and ask yourself, why would I buy from that company? Why would I buy from that company? And if it's because of cost, then it's more likely that company is cost leadership. Okay? So we're going to come back to this in a minute. This is a Credit Suisse scorecard ranking of top smartphone vendors. And notice that this is replicated in the exam question here. You know the exam question. It's replicated in that. We're going to come to that in a minute. But what I want to know, what I want to show you now is the customer preference map. The customer preference map is as following. And what I'm going to take you through is how we go from a kind of strategy that a certain organization has right through to the focus on particular ratios that we need to look at at the financial reporting end. Okay? Strategy all the way down to ratios. You need to know this. Uh, you need to appreciate this. Don't need to know it in detail. Okay? But knowing that there's a connection gives the strategy part that you do need to know legitimacy. I mean, it's the reason why you need to know it. Okay? So I hope you can feel that you know, O'Connor is taking you through some real stuff that you need to know, not just more head knowledge, okay? Some real stuff. 
So let's get to the good oil. Here is what a customer preference map is like. So for example, chipset, uh, single product, high performance microchip can be used in multiple applications and enjoys reputation for superior features with flexible design to meet customers' needs. Okay? Great. All right. And it's competing with other, it's competing with other competitor, and that is Visalog. And so here is a customer preference map. This is what you do if you're doing a strategic analysis of a company. Strategy analysis. Rather than words, 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 do a customer preference map. And in your presentation, you can make a big impact. By the way, be creative in your presentation. I did emphasize uh, creativity in your presentations. I think that's very important. It's very important. It's very important when you go for jobs. It's very important when you make presentations to have the element of creativity in all the time. It's the only way to distinguish yourself from other people. Okay, uh, just a note on that. All right, so we go to price. Is chipset got a cheaper product than Visilog? or a more expensive product than Visilog. If the customer preference is, I'm going to go to chipset because of price. I'm not going to go to Visilog because of price. Because I, I put price, I rank it five for chipset and only three for Visilog. So, does chipset have a cheaper price or a more expensive price than its competitor? Cheaper price. You see that? So the customer preference map, when on first viewing it looks as though oh chipset has a more expensive price because you kind of oh it seems to be higher than Visalog. No it's the opposite way. That that x x axis represents a ranking. It, it represents an attribute value that customers put down. If the customers say it has a high attribute, then that's a dominant reason why customers buy from that company. If they buy because of a good price, then they're going to give it a high ranking. Not because it's a high price, it becomes an attractive feature of why customers buy from that company. And so that's what we have a customer preference map. You need to be able to do that in the exam. Okay? And, he, and so over the weekend, you can practice because now you can do a customer preference map on HTC. And there's the question there. Required, part A. Please refer to figure one. Draw a simple customer preference map for Apple, HTC, Apple, Nokia using attributes of price, software services, and brand. Okay, and you probably think, where's price? Price is not in here. Oh, you can calculate it because if you divide value share by unit share, you'll get some sense of the price. Okay, all right, so it's all in there somewhere. So, work on that during the weekend. That's the first takeaway I want you to be aware of. The next stage, we're going to have a break in a minute, is I want you to understand our customer preference map. We go to cost leadership strategy. We know from the, the customer preference map,